So let's talk about working with reference imagery within ZBrush. Uh, for our skull project, I've gone into Photoshop and I've sketched out uh, two views of the skull. So I have a front view and I have a side view. The front view is pretty much aligned with the center line here and you can see the side view is aligned where the jaw meets the skull, the center line. Also I've made the image square. It's 1024 by 2024 so that will make it easier to apply to the grid. I'll have to do less adjustment in ZBrush if I keep the image square. So just save myself some time in the future. So I can save this in Photoshop format. I just need to make sure that they have been flattened. So I will flatten this and I'll do save as and I'm going to call this skull front view. And let's go back one step in the history, turn off the front view, turn on the side view and let's flatten this and save it as skull side view. And then we can leave Photoshop and enter ZBrush. So I'll minimize this. And here in ZBrush, I'm going to go into Lightbox. And under Project, I'm going to load the default sphere project as the starting point. OK, so we have our default sphere. You can see the grid. It's a little bit dim. So let's go into the Draw options here. And I'm going to go down to the uh, Grid options. And under modifiers, I'm going to turn up the frame opacity just to make it a little bit easier to see the grid there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the texture menu right here. I could go right here or I could go to the texture palette right here. Either way, it doesn't matter. But I'll just go into texture and choose import and then find my images. Then we're going to select the front view, and I'll shift select the side view, and that'll pull both of them in at the same time. So if I look at my texture palette, I can see there's my front view of the skull, and here's the side view. So to apply these to the grid, I need to go back into the Draw menu. So this is Draw, and let's go all the way down here to Front Back. So I'm expanding Front Back, and I'm going to click on Map 1 under Front Back, and I'm going to choose my front view. When I do that, you can see the front view appears in the back of the grid. You'll also notice that that back side of the grid just appeared. So it makes our lives a little easier. And then I'm going to go into left, right, click on map one, and choose the side view. So now I have my side view and my front view. Um, if for some reason you have a non-square image or something that needs to be adjusted, you can use the sliders here to move these back and forth in space. You can also flip them and rotate and so on. So, um, but that's the basics for something like a skull. If you do some preparation in Photoshop, uh, making these face the right way, about the same size and square, then you will have an easier time. You won't have to mess with this as much in ZBrush. So let's close the draw palette because we're done with that. A few other options in the draw palette that are important. Um, is one is the fill mode. If I lower the fill mode, you can see that I don't actually see the image if the fill mode is in zero. If it's in one, the image is kind of dim. Uh, but you'll notice the object here is not transparent. If I set fill mode to two, I have uh, it's brighter. You can see the image more, but this is still uh, basically opaque. And then if I choose fill mode to three, we get a semi transparent. Uh, surface, which makes it easier when in the initial stages when we're just essentially trying to shape this sphere so that it matches the proportions of our sketches. And then we have also sliders for enhance factor, so you can change um, you can change how the transparency of both the background images and the surface work using that enhance feature. The tiles essentially controls the number of tiles we see in the background. I usually turn P line off. I don't like the perspective line that aligns the brush with the grid. Uh, personally, I find that kind of distracting. So I'll go into front back, turn P line off, and I'll also go into left to right and also turn off P line. So finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my project. That way, the next time I load this project, I don't have to go through all the process of setting up my 
uh, image planes, they'll already be set up for me. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save this as skull 001.zpr. And it's just telling me that it's adding a shortcut. It's a light box to the project.